All right, here we go. Unit three, lesson six, the derivatives of e to the x, the exponential function as it's known, and the natural log of x. So these are two additional derivatives that we are going to learn today. We'll start by reminding ourselves about these individual functions. So first, let's just start off with e. e is an irrational number like pi. It cannot be expressed as the ratio of two whole numbers. So its decimal repeats forever, doesn't have any sort of pattern, and it starts out 2.718. And it turns out it has a bunch of really interesting properties. One of them is that if you create this function, y equals e to the power of x. So as you'll see over here on this graph, e to the first is just e. It's 2.718. e squared, e to the second, would be something less than 9, because 3 squared would be 9. So you can see how that function looks. It has this really interesting property. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And that's the only function in the whole world for which that's true. It is its own derivative. And you can see that's true in the little Desmos graph that I've made. Remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at a point. And so here, we have two things plotted. I have e to the x and its tangent line at 1. And as you can see, e to the first, right, e to the first is 2.718 and so on. And the slope of the tangent line, the slope of this tangent line is 2.718218. The slope of the tangent line is the same thing. And you could draw that at any point on the graph. The y coordinate is the same as the slope of the tangent line. There's a really interesting fact here. I have been saying, though, that this is the exponential function. We do have to remember this is a function. This isn't just like 2 times x. It's e to the power of x. And so if we have anything besides x, we are going to have to remember to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of whatever that exponent is. That's why some people, you will see this sometimes, they will write this, instead of e to the f of x, they'll write this as exp means the exact same thing, but it helps remember that the chain rule is going on here. The only reason you don't see it up top is because the derivative of x is 1. So there's like a hidden 1 up there that you don't see. So let's see that lived out here. Um, the key is basically just it's always a two-step process with e. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the first thing I just write down, I write down literally the exact same thing, e to the sine of x. But then I also have to do times the derivative of the sine of x, and I'll only do this extra step once here so you can see it, because this is the chain rule. And so the final answer here is going to be e to the sine of x times the cosine of x. All right? So if we had 3e to the 2x, my derivative would be 3e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is just 2. So putting it together, we'd have 6e to the 2x. Finally, just mixing it up a little bit, a little bit of review, x squared times e to the 2x, we'd have the power rule. So we'd have f prime, the derivative of x squared, times g, which is e to the 2x, plus f, which is just x squared again, times the derivative of e to the 2x, which is just e to the 2x, but now this one gets a times 2 because of the chain rule. So all together here, if you wanted to factor this out, we could factor out a 2x e to the 2x, because they both terms share a 2, an x, and an e to the 2x. It is exactly this first term, plus x squared. And so that would be one way, like if you were asked to find zeros of that function, it would be a lot easier um, now to see that. So those are just some example derivatives with e to the x. There's one more interesting derivative we're going to learn today, and that's the derivative of the natural log function. Remember what the natural log function is, this is just the log in base e of x. So it's another function, and specifically it's asking, basically it's asking this question, e to what power equals x? 
And so one of the most common things you'll see is to be asked to find the natural log of E, which is kind of a dumb trick question. It's just asking you what power of E is E, which is just one. So natural log and E kind of cancel each other out and become one. Anyway, that's what natural log is. Natural log also has an interesting derivative. The derivative of the natural log of x, it's kind of weird, so it's easy to remember, is one over x. The derivative of natural log of x is one over x. So as you can see here, in red, we've got the natural log of x. In purple, we've got the tangent line, which is tangent at x equals, in this case, three. And so what we would predict here, the derivative at three, the slope of this tangent line should be one over three, and it is. The slope of the tangent line equals the derivative, and in this case, this is one over x, so one over three is why that is one third. Now once again, f of x is a function, so we would have to apply the chain rule. Sometimes you will see this written just as f prime of x over f of x. I, I think it's cleaner the way I've written it, one over f of x times f prime of x to emphasize the chain rule. So here we go. If we had the natural log of 2x minus 3, again, I like to do this in two steps. I like to say, first, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So 1 over, in this case, x is 2x minus 3, times the derivative of 2x minus 3, which is just 2. And so altogether here, we would have 2 over 2x minus 3. And so as you can see, if you skipped straight to that, you can do it. I just think it's harder to remember where things come from. If we had the natural log of 3x squared plus 2x, I'll do this one down on the side just in case that wasn't clear here. The derivative of 3x squared plus 2x, well, that's going to be equal to 6x plus 2. So this derivative would be 1 over 3x squared plus 2x times 6x plus 2. And if you felt up for it, you could rewrite this as a, a fraction like this, but if it was free response, you wouldn't have to. You could have left it. 3x squared plus 2x, that's good. All right. And finally, the natural log of cosine of x. This is a fun one because first, the derivative here, sorry, I always forget to do this. f prime of x was what I was doing in my head. Um, f prime of x f prime of x, just finding the derivatives here. So we would have one over cosine of x, chain rule times negative sine of x. And so we put that together, we'd have negative sine of x over cosine of x, or negative tangent of x. Key points here, you have to have memorized the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and then chain rule if necessary. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then chain rule if necessary.